The Soyuz 7K Lok, or simply Lok, Russian, Lunij Orbitalnij Korobol Translate. Luni Orbitalny Korobol meaning, Lunar Orbital Craft was a Soviet manned spacecraft designed to launch men from Earth to orbit the Moon, developed in parallel to the 7KL-1. The LOK would carry two cosmonauts, acting as a mother ship for the LK lander which would land one crew member to the surface. It was part of the N1L3 program which also included the LK lander and the N1 rocket. Topic. Design Like the 7KOK model, the 7K LOK was divided into three sections, an ellipsoid orbital module, the headlight-shaped descent module, and a cylindrical equipment module. Like the 7KOK, the 7K LOK was capable of physically docking with another spacecraft, but lacked the transfer tunnel used on the Apollo spacecraft, thus forcing the cosmonaut to make a spacewalk from the 7KLOK's orbital module to the LK lander using the new Crèche space suit, the predecessor to the Orlan space suits used today on the International Space Station. Another change to the 7K LOK was the elimination of the solar panels used on the 7K OK, replacing them with fuel cells similar to those found on the Apollo CSM. Another feature, a cupola, located on the orbital module, allowed the cosmonaut in the 7K LOK to perform the docking procedure with the LK lander after lunar liftoff. Only the descent module from the 7KL-1, with a thicker, reinforced heat shield, is used on the 7K LOK and like the 7KL-1, is capable of doing a skip re-entry, so that the Soyuz could be recovered in the Soviet Union. The information display systems IDs, on the LOK were different from those of the Soyuz 7K. The descent module was equipped with the urine control panel and the orbital module featured the Orion approach control panel. Topic. Flights Only three unmanned 7K LOKs were flown in the short lifespan of the failed Soviet lunar program. One of them was a dummy 7K LOK as a Soyuz 7KL-1E modification of a Soyuz 7KL-1 Zond spacecraft and was successfully test launched into low Earth orbit on a proton rocket designated as Cosmos 382 Soyuz 7KL-1E No. 2 on December 2, 1970. Two other unsuccessful launches of dummy 7K LOK Soyuz 7KL 1E No. 1 and operational Soyuz 7K LOK No. 1 with dummy LKs were fulfilled atop the N1 rocket in its later flights on June 26, 1971 and November 23, 1972 intended for lunar flybys. Both spacecraft were pulled and saved by the launch escape system when those boosters failed. The two aborted flights later proved that the launch escape system worked when a similar problem on a Soyuz U forced the Soyuz T-10A to be jettisoned with its cosmonaut crew in 1983 before the booster exploded on the launch pad, destroying it. On two early flights of the N-1, both of them failures, another Soyuz 7KL-1S Zond M modification of the 7KL-1 spacecraft instead of the 7K LOK or 7KL-1E were used without the dummy LK, and they, along with the booster, were destroyed. Subsequently, a complete L-3 lunar expedition complex with an operational 7K LOK and LK for an unmanned lunar flyby and landing mission in preparation of a future man scenario was prepared for the fifth launch of a modified N-1 rocket in August 1974. 
The N1L3 program was cancelled in May 1974 and the Soviets decided to concentrate on the development of space stations, achieving several firsts in the process. Topic future Although never flown, the planned, and discontinued, joint Russian, ESA acts missions to the Moon, planned as a response to NASA's Project Constellation, would have seen the resurrection, somewhat, of the 7K Loke spacecraft, but with the current Soyuz TMA hardware, solar panels, docking and transfer system, etc. being used. <laughs>